unknown miscreant lob bomb at residence of RIMS director. No injury reported from blast. India reports 15,528 new COVID cases and in 1,407 fewer than yesterday, 25 deaths in 24 hours. COVID-19 naging aktok na ba? Miyam na sapo na toy na kudhambiyo. To protect from COVID-19, wash your hands with soap frequently. Max Ningtina, Niyom Chum Na Upiyo. Whenever you go out of your house, wear mask properly. Amadi, Mi Amaga, Mi Amaga Limarakta, Fit Taduklap Na Pambiyo. Always keep six feet distance from other people. Hello and welcome to ISTV English News. Bomb blast reported at the residence of Director of RIMS, Dr. Ahantem Chanta, at Uripok Ahantem Reikai after unidentified miscreants hurled bomb. The incident took place around 8.45 p.m. yesterday. However, no injury was reported from the blast as the bomb fell into a pond and exploded underwater. The reason behind the attack is yet to be ascertained and no one has claimed responsibility for the attack so far. Personnel of Imphal Police Station arrived and took stock of the situation, a swarm motor case has been registered at Imphal Police Station. India reported 15,528 new coronavirus infections in the last 24 hours, taking the country's total tally of COVID-19 infections from the beginning of the pandemic to 4 crore 37 lakh 83,062, with a drop of 610 cases from the previous day. India's active caseload declined to 1 lakh 43,654 from 1,44,264. According to the Union Health Ministry data on Tuesday morning, the active cases comprise 0.33% of the total infections. In the reported 25 COVID-related deaths across the country in the last 24 hours, according to the Union Health Ministry. India's overall debt toll since the beginning of the pandemic has now reached 5,25,785, with 16,113 recoveries from COVID-19 in the last 24 hours. The national recovery rate stands at 98.47%, the health ministry said. The number of people who have recuperated from the disease surged to 4 crore 31,13,623. Social activist Majai Bung Gangwe has alleged that the recklessness of Indian railways is behind the Makwa Marangting tragic landslide that claimed lives of several people on June 29. Speaking to media persons at Makwa village in Nune district, Majai Bung Gangwe recalled that Geological Survey of India had carried out detailed survey of the area in 2013 before Indian Railway initiated work for laying the railway lines. GSI resurveyed the same area in 2017 and it was pointed out that the area was not feasible for any railway substation, Majabung said. He further said, if only Indian Railway give discloses the survey reports to the locals and others in time, the people would have taken preventive measures and averted the tragedy. He also demanded resurvey of the railway project. Like talking about the council of fact, never information lay lay na mo na tatuk tapo gi maki masi gi lens lay si top ni hay ni ni ah adu kung ba project sa ba ama paikal laga yam na thausad na neglect way ba kamay na si kinder ka ni kam tapo ni hay bu si mo na section lang tapo gi information lay lay na information do share tapo tapo gi masi gi thodok si top ni adu na masi da top ba apat apat ba data loy na maksi railway ministry na law from toy hay na isin ni ni Social impact assessment tauro, environment impact assessment tauro, latest technology equipment ni amat hamo, ko, aduga darkar lagi pun mian se, hausi kausi, me amma returning wall kari kara kang de, masih me am se, local na faham satisfy way de, moy di me moringam juga, madu me am tu reassess tauro, resurvey tauro, darkar lagi de, skill reinforcement tier kara protection tauro hai bukti, aduga maksiyau. 
The road stretch of National Highway 37 to District Hospital Uchatol is in dilapidated condition due to repeated landslide occurring on the road and frequent commute of trucks belonging to Indian Railway. As the area is prone to road accident, local residents and commuters are worried that someday even lives will be lost due to the pathetic road condition. Even today, another landslide took place on the road and a team of Jiribam Forest Department, led by Range Forest Officer in charge and Bureau Singh cleared the, the debris fallen on the road. Professor and Head of Pathology Department RIMS, Dr. Sushma Kurajam, stated that screening rate of for cancer in health facilities is relatively low even though cancer cases are increasing in Manipur. She made a remark at the release of report on monitoring survey of cancer risk factors and health system response in Northeast region Manipur at RIMS Infall. The Department of Pathology RIMS Infall, in collaboration with ICMR and CDIR, took up the project this year, uh, in this year, 2019 to 2021, uh, Director of RIMS, Professor A. Santa, State Mission Director, NHM Ningombam Samurjit, Dean of Academy in Charge, Professor T. H. Mira, Medical Superintendent of RIMS, Professor and Sanjib to attended the release function. Dr. Sushma Kurajam further said, consumption of tobacco products are the major cause of cancer reported in Manipur. Lungs, throat, mouth cancers are common in men, while oesophagus, stomach, cervix, and breast cancers are common in women. Furthermore, community health centers do not have facility for cancer screening, and there is even lack of cancer awareness in the state. Now, as the survey report has been released, the state government can introduce certain health benefits related to the prevention and treatment of cancer, she added. The Manipur government has been able to prevent cancer from the first step 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 to prevent cancer Streamline to be raga, Manipurgi, Data Laira Kutta, Dujeki, Data Laira Banina, Dugi Achumba, Steps Loka Pirakani, Hibagi, appreciate, expect auxiliary, state government, and other stakeholders of Manipur. A team of Tabal Commando arrested two persons with suspected brown sugar of 37.73 kg during a raid conducted at a house located at Dilong Nungai Kunao. The arrested individuals have been identified as Mojing Mayum Hasim, 27, son of Mohi of Dilong Nungai Kunao, and Makak Mayum Farooq, 22, son of M. Item of Sikong. The arrested persons, along with the seized articles, are handed over to Lilong Police Station and the case has been registered for further necessary action. Subdivisional Police Officer L. Ajit took stock of Taubal Police Station today as part of the annual inspection program. As part of the annual inspection held under the supervisor of Superintendent of Police Taubal, Jogesh Chandra Haubijam and DSDPO, Taubal received a guard of honor from a team led by officer in charge of Taubal Police Station, Cage Dilip Kumar. Arms and ammunition of the police station were also displayed. The SDPO assessed the arms and ammunition, personal strength, FIR register, police quarter, lockup at the police station. Both the Houses of Parliament were adjourned till 2 p.m. following a position protest over price rise and GSD hike. In the Lok Sabha, when the House met for the day, Congress leader Adhir Ranjan Chowdhury tried to raise the issue of price rise. Speaker Om Bila did not give permission and immediately started question hour. Following this, opposition members, including Congress, DMK and TMC troops to the well raising slogans against government over price hike amid the speaker tried to run the question hour while repeatedly asking agitating members to go back to their seats, but in vain. Speaker Om Bela said, as per rules, it is not allowed to bring play cards inside the house. Later, Mr. Bela adjourned the proceedings till 2 p.m. Similar scene was witnessed in the Rajya Sabha when the upper house met this morning. Chairman M. Venkaya Naidu rejected the adjournment notices moved by Congress, Ahmadmi Party and other opposition party members. Over 
over price rise and other issues. After the opposition members, including Congress, AAP and DMK, created noisy scenes in the House, which led to adjournment of the House till 2 p.m. The Supreme Court on Tuesday transferred PILs pending before it challenging the center's Agni Path scheme for recruitment in the armed forces to the Delhi High Court. A bench of Justices D. Y. Chandra Chud, Surya Kant and A. S. Bopana also asked the High Courts of Kerala, Punjab and Haryana, Patna and Uttarakhand to transfer the PILs pending before them against the scheme to the Delhi High Court or keep it pending till a decision from the Hi Delhi High Court if the petitioners before it so desire. The bench said petitioners before the four High Courts can also opt to intervene in the proceedings before the Delhi High Court. The top court said it is transferring the pleas as it would be appropriate if it has benefit of the Delhi High Court's considered view on them. The Agni Part scheme announced on June 14 provides for the recruitment of youth with a provision uh, to retain 25% of them for 15 more years. Protests have erupted in several states against the scheme. Sri Lanka in Sri Lanka acting president Ranil Wickremesinghe Anura Kumara Disanayaka and Dulas Alaha Peruma will contest for the presidency tomorrow in Parliament. Local media reports nominations for the presidency were called for in Parliament today and the names of Ranil Wickremesinghe, Dulas and Anura Kumara were proposed and seconded by the respective parties. Leader of the House Dinesh Gunawardena proposed Ranil and his name was seconded by Manusha Nana Yakra. On, on the other hand, opposition leader Sajit Prema Dasa has decided to withdraw his presidential nomination and the SJB will support SLPP MP Dulas and the upcoming, in the upcoming election. However, a fundamental rights petition first challenging the legality of the appointment of UNP leader Ranil as a member of parliament was dismissed today by the Supreme Court. Sri Lanka's Supreme Court chief three-judge bench refused to grant leave to proceed with this petition, taking into consideration several reasons, including petition had been filed out of time. In United Kingdom, Conservative MPs will vote again today as they continue the process of choosing the two candidates for leader who will be put to a vote of members. One of the four remaining contenders, Rishi Sunak, Penny Mordaunt, Liz Truss and Kemi Barenok, will be eliminated when the result is announced later. On the other hand, Prime Minister Boris Johnson will hold his last scheduled cabinet meeting ahead of Westminster's summer recess. The Conservative Party wants MPs to have chosen the two candidates to replace him before the Commons finishes on Thursday, with the final vote set to take place on Wednesday. After a summer of campaigning by the two final contenders, there's grassroots Tories will vote for who should become leader, with the winners to be announced on 5th of September. The headlines again. Unknown miscreants lob bomb at residence of RIM's director, no injury reported from blast. India reports 15,528 new COVID cases, 1,407 fewer than yesterday, 25 deaths in 24 hours. That's the end for now. Thank you for joining with us.